Came up to me, he said to me, Your money or your life? I said, Look, I'm very sorry, but I, <laughs> I actually don't have any money. I live with my mum and dad. He said to me, I don't care, your life then. I said, I don't have a life. I, I live with my mum and dad. He said, I don't care. And he took my life anyway. Well, now he lives with my mum and dad. There's a, a mate of mine was inside with Jeffrey Archer. You know, he's, well, he's a lion twat, and he basically. I know it was a long time ago, but I still remember. Well, even in court, he put his hand on the Bible and went, oh, I wrote that. I live in North London, an area called Finsbury Park. It's really expensive and very rough. It has recently been twinned with a badger's arse. Now, it's getting a lot rougher, and I swear to God, in the last month, two people have been mugged in my actual street. One of them didn't even have any money. It was a complete waste of my time. See, I come from Oldham, though. Like, crime's just second nature. The only time anybody in my family ever went to university was to nick a computer. It's the attitude to crime I like these days. A van pulled up outside my house the other day, said on the side, R. Dawson and Sons, burglars. Started putting leaflets through the door. Uh, we will be in the area on Thursday. If you could leave your video out, save us a bit of time, save you a front door. You're eight times more likely to get mugged in England than you are in America. That's because you don't live in America. Because I, I used to live in a, quite a rough area in Manchester. You know, a place called Cheetah Mill, it was, uh, it was quite a desolate place. I'll twin with purgatory, lots of people, bed sits, waiting for nothing, you know. Like, you go to your local shop there, buy some of a boss stick, and I'd have a serving suggestion on the front. And one of the great things about Jamaica is that, unlike in this country where you can't drink and drive, but you can smoke and drive. Oh, yes, in this country, it's fantastic. You can tell people who've been smoking and driving. <laughs> they just go really, really slowly. <laughs> Unfortunately, there is a terrible irony in Jamaica. Ganja is illegal. And the police will arrest you for possession of ganja. And then what do they do? It's a terrible double standard. They take it and burn it, which is what you were going to do with it in the first place. Cheetah Mill's a really multicultural area. Like on, on Cheetah Mill Road, you've got a synagogue, and, and next to that is a mosque, and then next to that is a Catholic church, and next to that, well, well there's a Woolworths. I know you didn't need to know that, but there is. And uh, there's a lot, so much praying goes on in Cheetah Mill. You know, everyone's praying, get me the fuck out. So my local paper came through the door the other day. The headline read, knife attacker may strike again. I thought, what possible grounds can he have for industrial action? See, in Oldham last year, we had the riots, right? And everyone was saying, oh, it must have been terrible, it must have been terrible. But it wasn't really, because Oldham's the coldest place on the earth normally. Right up on the moors, it's always raining, it's always freezing. But for one weekend, the shops were on fire, the cars were on fire. It was lovely. You could go out there, you cold on. Around my way, the, uh, the word on the street is uh, slow. I'm actually, I'm terrified of being caught in a bank raid because I know I'd let myself down on the CCTV footage. You know, it would be like a, suddenly the raider pulls out his sawn-off shotgun. Don't be alarmed by the figure screaming and collapsing in the top right-hand corner of the screen. He's not been shot. That's how he's fainted. Maybe they should actually invent their own programme for me. You know, they call it Coward Watch. I'd be on it every week. And they'd be like, this week's coward is Hal Cruttenden. He's white, five foot ten, with a heavily scared face. Here we see him pretending not to notice while an old lady is mugged by a ten-year-old. Police advise members of the public to approach him without caution and go, boo. I don't know what class our family is, you know, cos round our way there was, there was no real class thing. All you had was, like, posh in school, you know. The difference being that you took your shoes off before you went into a posh person's house, whereas if you did that in our house, you, you wouldn't get them back. I mean, what's the rehabilitation they do inside? It apparently doesn't work. Oh, I personally, I don't see why, because they teach you loads of good things when you're inside, don't they? You know, like handmade basket weaving. Oh, you can imagine all the criminals sitting around going, oh, yeah, cheers, yeah, thanks. That's the only reason I've been nicking stuff all these years, you know, because of lack of confidence with wicker. 
I see they're thinking of having like weekend only prison sentences, but I just don't think this is ever going to work. I mean, for me, being sent to prison for a weekend is only one notch worse than being sent to your room. I can't think there's many crims around who are going to go, oh, I'd love to nick that car, but I better not because I might miss blind date. Oscar Wilde was imprisoned for sodomy. To me, that's a bit like sending your kid to work at McDonald's to clear up his acne. <laughs> They're giving victims of bullying now mobile phones, you, you know, so they can contact people. It seems a bit pointless, you know, I mean, you can't get reception when your head's down the toilet. I got stopped by the police in my car. I just ran the window down and I said, uh, would you like to get out of the vehicle? I said, no, not really. They said, uh, would you like to take a breathalyzer test? And I said, no, not really. They said, would you like to go in the car with a shiny BP horn? I said, no, I get arrested for wasting police time. I bought a watch with an alarm, but it was no good. Still got nicked. So I think where it all starts really is the teachers. It's where you can blame crime on the teachers. I was victimised terribly by an English teacher. She used to make us read out stuff to the class, which is fine, but she knew I suffered from asthma, so she deliberately tipex out the punctuation and wait for me to pass out. Because discipline in the home, that's what it's all about. That's what everyone says. People and kids should get discipline in the home. I remember when I was a kid, you know, if we did anything wrong, my dad, he'd take his belt off, wind it round his arm and jack up. The thing is, though, it's just pointless, isn't it? They're saying, oh, we can't legalise weed because soft drugs lead to hard drugs. I'm thinking, well, logically, if soft drugs lead to hard drugs, then masturbation would lead to sex. And it doesn't, does it? I saw a police sign the other day. It said, question, what do cowards do for a living? Answer, they rob and mug. I thought, that's not very fair. I've never robbed anyone in my life. Too scared. What if they've got a knife? Or a fork? They could have me for breakfast. My brother's changed. He's got a new job. He's an assistant coroner. Picks up dead people for a living. Consequently, he now just hates fat people. Well, think about it. That's a shitty day at the office. You know, he just shows up. Ah, oh, for fuck's sakes. All I'm saying is if you're over 30 stone and you live on the third floor of a walk-up apartment, no matter what you die of, nine times out of ten, it's going to get written down as a suicide. <laughs> Open the window, we have got ourselves a jumper. I was driving through a very rough area of West London. I saw a big police sign by the side of the road, big yellow and black thing. It said, violent crime here. Tuesday, 7.30. Can you help? I don't even approve. When things turn nasty and a fight breaks out, don't worry about the big guys. It's the little buggers you have to worry about. If a big guy hits you, it's like a big ham hitting you. <laughs> sure, it hurts, but it's not that bad. But a bony guy, if he hits you, you ever walked into a coffee table? <laughs> it's like that when he punches you. Oh, God, don't get involved in a bony man fight. Mm. Securical vans. They have a notice on the back saying, this van contains a locked safe to which the crew have no access. Which rather begs the question, well, where do they put the money then? The thing is with rain, yeah, with raindrops, is um, they kind of, when they're coming down to the earth, yeah, they kind of hold themselves together like that. Oh, hold yourself together, hold yourself together. And when they hit the floor, it's like, oh, it's like a release, yeah? It's kind of like an orgasm for rain. It's like, oh, hold yourself together, oh, release. It's amazing. I love them. They're brilliant. And I was watching them the other day, because I haven't got much on. But, right, I was watching this one particular raindrop, and he came down normal like the others. Hold yourself together, hold yourself together, gathering up speed. And he hit the floor, oh, release. And then he released. And when he hit the floor, yeah, he released. But then he looked around, a bit shifty, and then he gathered himself back in, yeah, and just legged it. 
I thought, what's going on here? I'm gonna watch this a bit more. I went in, made a flask of tea, and I sat there and watched the whole thing. 10 minutes later, the raindrop police turned up, yeah, in a small van and chased him. He went round one corner, they came round in a little van. He went round another corner, they went round the corner. He went round another corner, got in a glass of Evian, and they drove straight past. It was amazing. Ah, oh, it's fantastic. And later on at the raindrop police inquiry, the sergeant was there, and he was there with his big moustache, like an albatross, going, this raindrop was moving at a pace that can only describe as lightning. He was running like the clappers, he was moving like a bitch. And we believe he got away with the crown jewels. And someone said, but he's a raindrop, how is he holding crown jewels? And the sergeant said, we believe he had a Velcro sort of pouch system connected to his body, and we believe he had the crown jewels in there. And someone said, how do your officers carry their truncheons? And he went, all my officers are a mixture of hard and soft water. Where the two meet, we slide the truncheons in there. And someone at the back said, maybe that's how he got away with the crown jewels. You, you ch shut your mouth. I ram raided a shop once, obviously. I've got an accent and that, I'm allowed. No, I did ram raid a shop once and uh, I was a bit stoned, unfortunately. And uh, it don't work, does it? I mean, you try smashing a car through a shop window at three miles an hour. It's like, mm. Mm. I come from a very musical family, uh, my nan especially. She lives alone and we do worry about her a wee bit. We were going to buy one of those panic buttons to wear around her neck, but a um, bit of a technophobe is my nan. So we now compromise and she wears one of my old school recorders around her neck. Um, we know she's in trouble. If we hear initiative London's burning. Make punishment fit the crime. Any old ladies who allow their doggies to defecate on the pavement should be chained to a urinal where we can piss on them. Now hang on, I'm getting confused with that video I brought back from Amsterdam. I was in Scotland recently, and I came out on stage, and I went, how you doing, Scotland? I came here to learn all about sheep shagging. They actually don't like it when you say that. It was really weird, too, because this guy in the front row jumped up at me, and he went, oi, that's Wales. How was I supposed to know, man? You'd have to be a pretty good swimmer to pull that off. My favourite part of this country is the West Country, because there's very little crime there, because there'd be no point. If someone stole a car in the West Country, everyone on the street would just go, well, well, well that's, that, that's Bob's car, but that's not Bob. Quick, call Constable Jones. Constable Jones, there's been a crime. A crime? Must be someone from London. Quick, rev up the tractor. Constable Jones gets in hot pursuit of the stolen vehicle getting his inbred son with one eyebrow to lean out the window going, oh ah, 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 that's the finest pun you'll ever hear, my friend. Now, of course, I'm aware that was a pretty crap attempt at the accent, but hey, when you guys go, God, I shove a shrimp on the barbie, sounds bang on to me. I got arrested myself the deal of Christmas, actually, yeah. I can't believe it in this day and age. You can't even masturbate in the privacy of your own bus seat. Oh, it's a gentleman sitting in the seat in front of me reporting the incident. Uh, quite a naive man, I think he was. Uh, a little bit wet behind the ears. That's disgraceful. I can't do that. That's horrible. So can one gag. Hey. Britain is mysterious. I came here wanting to see crop circles. But I read that 80% of crop circles were caused by vandals and troublemakers. That means that only 20% were caused by aliens from other planets. 